Hey guys, it's Tony Simbilts here, and welcome back to another Bite Size Speed Build. Now fortunately this time around, this is actually a true mini speed build, and of course, as you can tell from the title of today's video, we are currently working on a pastel tiny home farm. So obviously this idea was very heavily inspired by Easter, and unfortunately it is not the more religious or spiritual aspect of Easter, but of course the commercial aspect of the holiday itself. So you guys know the deal, it's usually a lot of pastel colors, it's very spring influenced if that makes sense. Um, so lots of chicks and bunnies and sort of that cottagecore aesthetic almost. So that is definitely what I was going for with this build. Now as you can see we are in the world of Windenburg. This is pretty much my favorite lot or one of my favorite lots in this world. And I think for this very small farm build I think it was absolutely perfect for it. So as you can tell, I'm going for a very provincial look. I would say that this cottage is fairly rural in style and is also very rustic. So I'm making use out of a lot of the different objects from the cottage living pack. So we do have that sort of hay thatched roof, if that makes sense. We do have the awnings and also the shuttered windows that came with the pack as well. Now, thankfully, this is also a tiny home, just like the name implies. And I think it is a second tier. So it is only 64 tiles max if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but this build was honestly super fun. I have not used a lot of these swatches in perhaps any of my builds actually. I don't normally do pastel tones in my build, so it was the first time using a lot of these swatches with these objects from Cottage Living. But of course you're seeing the whole house shape up. I am adding in some ivy pieces also from the Cottage Living pack, and I do mix it up with both the ones that are in the game itself and also from Debug as well. So if you guys have not explored Debug, there are actually some very amazing ivy pieces in that section. And in my opinion, they do rival the ones in game. I really enjoy the corner pieces there. And of course, we are working with more Debug here. And I do believe I'm pulling these fence pieces from the Get Together pack. So originally, I did use the ones from Cottage Living, but obviously, uh, this is the end result here with the enclosure. And right now, I'm currently adding in some hedges because, you know, I love my hedges, you guys. I love my greenery and the hedges from Debug also work perfectly here. Now going with the pastel color scheme, I do stick with a very sort of light yellow sunshine color. Um, lots of very, very light baby blues here and also some whites and creams as well. So of course, a lot of the flower beds also fall under that same color scheme. You guys also saw I did leave a space towards the right and I will have a few different entrances and exits to this house as well. I did finish off the house with a nice wreath from the Conj Living Pack in place of a small attic window. And now I'm using my favorite soil texture just to map out some of the grounds as well. Now, of course, this is a farm. So the space I'm working with is very small, um, but again, paying homage to the more commercial aspect of Easter. Uh, we will have a chicken farm, if that makes sense. So you might have some baby chicks around. Um, I will eventually also get the animal spawner. So that will include the bird spawner and also the rabbit spawner as well. Now, unfortunately, these debug fences don't really work the way you think they would. Um, usually, Sims can kind of go right through them at times. So, of course, when I was designing the chicken coop area, I did actually have to use real fences from the game itself. So I'm using these fence pieces from the Cottage Living Pack, sort of creating an enclosure for the hens in case you don't want them sort of wandering around a lot. And, of course, escaping. I don't really know if foxes attack the chickens, but I do think they are a hazard, so... Hopefully this will keep them safe. And of course, I'm just adding in some soil texture as well to complete that area. Now, like I said, this house will have a few different entrances and exits. And one of them was actually a side entrance that I had. And you will see the inside is a little bit tricky. I was having a few issues with the layout, uh, but we will get to that in just a little bit. I'm also using this gate for the first time, which was absolutely perfect for the pastel color scheme of this little cottage. And of course, just laying down more soil there as well. Towards the front, I do add a few more flowers. I'm pulling a lot of those same baby blue flower beds, just kind of surrounding the whole fence area, just like so. And eventually I will also load up this little debug car, or I should say truck. It's more of a retro debug truck, if you will. Anyways, I am finishing off this front area with a few more plants from Debug. 
And honestly, this pink flower is probably one of my favorites from Cottage Living. Unfortunately, I am not a botanist, so if you guys know the name of this plant, please let me know. Um, it looks sort of like a foxglove plant, if that makes sense. Um, I do know that we have a few similar options from the Romantic Garden Pack, so I thought they were really fitting for the look, and they did blend with the more pastel color scheme as well. Of course, again, relying more on debug, I'm pulling some lovely tree options here. Uh, the Weeping Willow tree is from the Cottage Living pack, and then I also pull the White Birch trees, I believe, from the Get Together pack as well. So, debug was amazing here. I really enjoy using debug, especially in very overgrown builds just like this. But of course, this base game shrubbery also comes into play as well. It's super handy if you like a lot of subtle overgrowth. And you do see I mix in a few flowers I think from base game. I do like a lot of those little pastel tones popping through once more. Now to the left, I am creating a little garden area, and I will say you can do quite a few things with this spot. I do use the large crop mounds from Cottage Living, so if you guys want to use them for uh, perhaps growing cabbages, pumpkins if you will, um, you can definitely use it for that. Or if you enjoy growing flowers, that could be another possibility. I'll definitely leave it up to you guys. Obviously though, space is very limited, we are on a 20 by 20 lot, but I did try to make the most out of the space as I could. Now like you guys saw, I did also include the animal spawners, so thankfully you will have some lovely birds and rabbits populating the lot itself. We do go back to the truck area, and I do find a lot of really fun clutter to include back here. Obviously this is a trick I've seen a lot of simmers do, and it honestly adds a nice bit of detail and also a nice aspect of realism. So lots of bags of soil, perhaps some boxes and produce that was harvested here. I'm also finessing the chicken coop area as well, and honestly it was kind of a hard area to furnish, I'm not really sure what to include in this area, but perhaps there could be some bags of chicken feed and also a nice bench to interact with the hens and chickens as well. But of course, we are moving on to the inside now, and this will be a one bedroom, one bathroom cottage. So fairly small, I do imagine a couple running this farm and living within this little house. Um, of course, I'm trying to map out space as best as I could, and you guys do see that I try to keep that side entrance there. Now I will say it will evolve. Um, it wasn't really in the exact placement I wanted, but I do try to make it work with the rest of the house. So we will have the bedroom towards the upper right corner, and then we will actually have a bathroom right here connecting to the side entrance. So um, I would say it's a little bit unorthodox, um, but I guess there is a method to my madness. Um, as weird as a side entrance may be into the bathroom, I figured that if you are doing farm work, if you're working with the hens, or you're busy, you know, gardening with the soil, with your crops and whatnot, um, it would be nice to go directly into the bathroom itself in order to clean up. So that is more or less my logic here. Um, I do eventually change out that light pastel door as well, and I actually use the other option from the Cottage Living Pack. So you won't be able to peek into the bathroom while someone's trying to clean themselves off. We definitely don't want that. We do need some privacy. Uh, but interestingly enough, for the very first time, the bathroom is the very first space that I furnish. So you guys saw quite a bit of it already. I'm using a mixture of both base game and also the Cottage Living Pack, trying to get a very rustic vibe in this space. I also really enjoy this stone swatch for the floor, and I do believe that stone swatch is actually from base game. To be honest with you guys, I don't really think I've actually used it before in another build, or if I did it was very, very sparingly. But I do think it worked fairly well in this space. You guys are also seeing the bedroom come to life as well. Going into it, I definitely wanted to use this wonderful dresser mirror combo from the Cottage Living Pack, and trying to work in more of those pastel tones. Thankfully, the Eco Lifestyle Pack was very handy here, so we do have the full bed from that pack, and also these curtains as well. Again, keeping with that light baby blue and that really soft pastel pink. I do add a lot of fun decor in this build, trying to really maximize clutter here. I will say my favorite clutter was probably the kitchen area, and you guys will see that momentarily. But of course, keeping it fun, keeping it sort of commercial Easter inspired if you will, so very um, country-like, very pastoral if that is the right word. But I think more or less you guys get where I'm coming from. We will momentarily enter the living room space, 
and honestly it was a little tricky situating this fireplace. I did want to use it towards the center and I did also add in a chimney off screen. So I figured I would put it roughly at the center of the wall and then also map out the kitchen towards the back. Now I did want to mix it up a little bit. I did create a slight platform area towards the back as well and obviously this is going to be for the kitchen space. There is one third final exit place and this is going to the backyard area and generally in comparison I will say that this space is going to be a lot nicer and more recreational for these sims and I intentionally wanted it to be separate from the farm aspects of the lot itself. Now in terms of the kitchen I do repurpose the stone flooring once more and obviously you guys the overall kitchen objects from the cottage living pack are stellar. And of course, if we are going with a super pastel color scheme, these objects work perfectly. I'm going for this light blue swatch on the cabinetry because it does have those hints of pink as well, especially with the fabric textures on them. Of course, getting all the essentials down, I'm using the matching sink and also the oven from the Cottage Living Pack as well. And this is more or less mapping out the kitchen space. Obviously, I lied, you guys. <laughs> I did not commit. I tried going for that more rustic option, but I figured the base game oven actually worked more effectively here. And again, adding a lot of really fun clutter with the little crock pot. I do enjoy this sort of Easter Bunny inspired statue as well, putting in some cookbooks inspired by the base game object, I would say. And again, putting more objects in the corner, once more pulling from the Cottage Living Pack. Honestly, a lot of the kitchen stuff is perfect in the Cottage Living Pack. I love all the pitchers and jars that come with it. But of course, we are now moving on to the living room. Now, for some odd reason, you guys, I really enjoy this fireplace. Um, but unfortunately, from my knowledge, there is no object that will actually snap to that surface. So if you are trying to place a painting or a TV, you will normally have to delete the walls behind the fireplace and then sort of carefully move object alt place, whatever you want to furnish the fireplace with into place. So it's a little bit of an arbitrary process, uh, but I did really enjoy the end result. Now, of course, the living room is coming to life as we speak. I'm using a lot of objects once more from the Cottage Living Pack. Again, pulling more of the pastel pink and very light baby blue options from the pack itself. Again, also with the flowers and little book object. Although I do believe the coffee table is from the Get Together Pack. And of course, I do pull that Eco Lifestyle rug once more that was also used in the bedroom space. So it was kind of a interesting option for me. I was originally going to go with the very fun animal themed cottage living rug, but I really liked the subtle woven texture of this rug instead. The rest of the space is fairly simple. I'm pulling this really beautiful hutch from the cottage living pack, and then I'm also using these portraits from base game. So these could be possible relatives of the couple living here, or maybe the past owners of this cottage. Now, of course, if this couple is managing a farm, I figured that we needed some kind of little tiny office space in this build. So perhaps this is where they manage a lot of their markets. Um, if they are going to different markets selling their goods, maybe they keep track of their income and finances here. I'm going to let you guys use your imagination with that. But of course, I didn't really have room for a large full desk. So I'm actually repurposing a base game table as a desk here. Of course, loading it with clutter, I do really love the animal theme of this build because of course, if we're thinking commercial Easter, I think of rabbits and bunnies and chicks. So we do have more objects inspired by that theme. So I did pull my favorite base game lamp that came with the infant update and also the little tiny wood crafting object that I do believe is in debug to furnish the bookshelf as well. Finishing off this space, I'm just using a small base game accent table. I put an embroidery set from Cottage Living to give your Sims another activity, if you will. But of course, we are now moving into the small mudroom area. Now, originally, I was actually going to have this area separated by an archway, but unfortunately, it was just a super tight space, so I couldn't really fit one in that doorway area. But it is nicely furnished. We do have a full bench there, again, from the Cottage Living Pack. We do have a little base game coat rack, if you will, and also the shoe rack there. And I tried fitting in that eco lifestyle full mirror. It's honestly one of my favorites, you guys, but it just wasn't really fitting with the theme. So I do go with that rustic base game option instead. Moving on, we do get to one of the more troublesome areas for me with this build, and this was the slightly more private backyard area. So like I said, this is going to be more of a recreational space. This is intentionally made to be separate from the farm and only accessible through the house itself. So 
As you guys saw, we didn't really have a true formal dining area in the house, so I'm actually making one outside instead. This is actually something I've been doing with a lot of my more rustic or sometimes fantasy builds. I actually did that with the Fairy Hacienda house as well, um, on top of having a dining room inside. Anyways, like I said, this house is full of different activities for your sims, so this does of course include the base game easel. And one trick I really like using is actually incorporating the small jar set I used in the kitchen from the Cottage Living Pack. So it kind of seems like they're little jars of paint, um, it's something I really enjoy doing if I use this pack in my builds, and it adds a nice bit of clutter as well. I do fill in the gap with a few different flower beds from the Get Together pack. Of course, the mandatory trash can, my favorite from the Get Together pack as well. And I do include this wagon from the Cottage Living pack in the corner. As you guys saw, I'm also adding in more ivy pieces. I really want to keep that overgrown aspect of the house in all sides of the house itself and its exterior. But of course, because we do have the outdoor dining space, I did want to include a few bits of clutter here. I do really enjoy the color of these tulips from the base game and also a lot of food themed objects as well, kind of creating a nice place to have brunch or dinner outside. You guys did also see I used a lot of these base game debug stepping stones. Honestly, they're probably one of the best debug objects in base game and they're really fun to use to create really rough implied paths. I do bring in that rabbit spawner and just kind of carefully adding a few bits of foliage around it just to make it look more grown into the lot if that makes sense. Now of course, here we go again you guys, I love my hedges, I do think I pull them from the get together pack this time, and while I was doing this, I actually found this really great trellis object that was also from the get together pack. So I do think it makes the dining room area or dining space area a little bit more shaded, it looks a little bit more cozy and considered if you will. Um, I do also eventually go over and add a lot of grass texture here, just trying to make the space feel a little bit more cozy and a little bit more separate from the farm area, if that makes sense. So just adding in a few more accents, I do bring in the Easter Bunny once more, and I'm just trying to carefully pad in some gravel texture to create some implied walkways around this space. But more or less, this does wrap up the backyard area. All right, guys, and that is a wrap on the pastel tiny home farm in the world of Windenburg. As always, I really hope you guys enjoyed the build, and if you do celebrate Easter, I do hope you have a wonderful holiday as well. As always, this is still a no CC, no mod, limited pack build, and will be available on the Sims 4 Gallery for download. I'll leave you guys now with the final lot specs, along with the final cinematic shots, so you can see how everything turned out in the end. And of course, just like always, this has been Townie Sim Builds, signing off. Thank you so much for watching, guys.